Yeshiva, Hebrew, Isib lit. Sitting. Place. Isib Yeshivo or Yeshivos is a Jewish institution that focuses on the study of traditional religious texts, primarily the Talmud and the Torah. The studying is usually done through daily shirim lectures or classes as well as in study pairs called Havrutas Aramaic for friendship or companionship. Havruta style learning is one of the unique features of the yeshiva. In the United States and Israel, the different levels of yeshiva education have different names. In the United States, elementary school students are enrolled in a yeshiva, post-bar mitzvah age students learn in a medivta, and undergraduate level students learn in a Beit Midrash or Yeshiva Jedla Hebrew, Isib Gedol lit. Large Yeshiva, or Great Yeshiva. In Israel, elementary school students are enrolled in a Talmud Torah or Cheder, post-bar mitzvah age students learn in a Yeshiva Katana Hebrew, Isib Ketienh lit. Small Yeshiva, or Minor Yeshiva and high school age students learn in a yeshiva jedala. A kolel is a yeshiva for married men. It is common for a kolel to pay a token stipend to its students. Students of Lithuanian and Hasidic yeshiva jedalas usually learn in yeshiva until they get married. Historically, yeshivas were attended by males only. Today, all non-Orthodox and a few modern Orthodox yeshivas are open to females. Although there are separate schools for Orthodox women and girls, yeshivas for women do not follow the same structure or curriculum as the traditional yeshiva for boys and men. Etymology Alternate spellings and names include yeshiva, Hebrew, sitting. Noun, Medivta and Masivta Aramaic, Mountype Mathivta, Beth Midrash, Talmudical Academy, Rabbinical Academy, and Rabbinical School. The word yeshiva, lit. sitting, is applied to the activity of learning in class, and hence to a learning session. The transference in meaning of the term from the learning session to the institution itself appears to have occurred by the time of the great Talmudic academies in Babylonia, Sura and Pumbedita, which were known as Shte Ha Yeshivo. The two colleges. History Origins The Mishnah tractate Megillah mentions the law that a town can only be called a city if it supports ten men to make up the required quorum for communal prayers. Likewise, every Beth Din house of judgment was attended by a number of pupils up to three times the size of the court Mishnah, Tractate Sanhedrin. These might be indications of the historicity of the classical yeshiva. As indicated by the Talmud, adults generally took off two months a year, Elul and Adar, the months preceding the pilgrimage festivals of Sukkot and Pesach, called Yarhai Kala Aramaic for months of Kala, to study. The rest of the year, they worked. Geonic period Topic. The Geonic period takes its name from Gaon, the title bestowed on the heads of the three yeshivas in existence from the 3rd to the 13th century. The Geonim acted as the principals of their individual yeshivo, and as spiritual leaders and high judges for the wider communities tied to them. The yeshiva conducted all official business in the name of its Gaon, and all correspondence to or from the yeshiva was addressed directly to the Gaon. Throughout the Geonic period there were three yeshivo. These were named for the cities in which they were located, Jerusalem, Sura, and Pumbedita. The yeshiva of Jerusalem would later relocate to Cairo, and the yeshivo of Sura and Pumbedita to Baghdad, but retain their original names. Each Jewish community would associate itself with one of the three yeshivo. Jews living around the Mediterranean typically followed the yeshiva in Jerusalem, while those living in the Arabian Peninsula and modern-day Iraq and Iran typically followed one of the two yeshivo in Baghdad. There was however, no requirement for this, and each community could choose to associate with any of the yeshivo. The yeshiva served as the highest educational institution for the rabbis of this period. In addition to this, the yeshiva wielded immense power as the principal body for interpreting Jewish law. In this regard, the community saw the gown of a yeshiva as the highest judge on all matters of Jewish law. Each yeshiva ruled differently on matters of ritual and law, the other yeshivo accepted these divisions, and all three ranked as equally orthodox. 
The yeshiva also served as an administrative authority, in conjunction with local communities, by appointing members to serve as the head of local congregations. Those appointed as the head of a congregation would serve as a go-between for the local congregation and the larger yeshiva it was attached to. These local leaders would also submit questions to the yeshiva to obtain final rulings on issues of dogma, ritual, or law. Each congregation was expected to follow only one yeshiva to prevent conflict with different rulings issued by different yeshiva. The yeshiva were financially supported through a number of means. There were fixed, but voluntary, yearly contributions made to the yeshivas. These annual contributions were collected and handled by the local leaders appointed by the yeshiva. Private gifts and donations from individuals were also common, especially during holidays, and could consist of money or goods. The yeshiva of Jerusalem was finally forced into exile in Cairo in 1127, and eventually dispersed entirely. Likewise, the yeshiva of Sura and Pumbedita were dispersed following the Mongol invasions of the 13th century. After the scattering of the yeshiva, education in Jewish religious studies became the responsibility of individual synagogues. No organization ever came to replace the three great yeshiva of Jerusalem, Sura and Pumbedita. Post-Geonic period to the 19th century After the Geonic period Jews went on to establishing more yeshiva academies in Europe and in northern Africa. One of these include the Kairouan Yeshiva in Spain Hebrew, Isak Kern that was established by Chushiel ben Elchanan Hebrew, Husel bn Lin in 974. Traditionally, every town rabbi had the right to maintain a number of full-time or part-time pupils in the town's Beth Midrash study hall, usually adjacent to the synagogue. Their cost of living was covered by community taxation. After a number of years, these young people would either take up a vacant rabbinical position elsewhere after obtaining semica, rabbinical ordination, or join the workforce. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Lithuanian yeshivas. Topic: <inaudible> Organized Torah study was revolutionized by Rabbi Chaim Volozhin, a disciple of the Vilna Gaon, an influential 18th-century leader of Judaism. In his view, the traditional arrangement did not cater for those who were looking for more intensive study. With the support of his teacher, Rabbi Volozhin gathered a large number of interested students and started a yeshiva in the now Belarusian town of Volozhin. Although the Volozhin yeshiva was closed some 60 years later due to the Russian government's demands for the introduction of certain secular studies, a number of yeshivo opened in other towns and cities, most notably Slobodka, Panavezis, Mir, Brisk, and Tels. Many prominent contemporary yeshivo in the United States and Israel are continuations of these institutions and often bear the same name. In the 19th century, Rabbi Israel Salander initiated the Masar movement in non-Hasidic Lithuanian Jewry, which sought to encourage yeshiva students and the wider community to spend regular times devoted to the study of Jewish ethical works. Concerned by the new social and religious changes of the Haskalah secularizing movement, and emerging political ideologies such as Zionism, that often opposed traditional Judaism, the masters of Masar saw a need to augment Talmudic study with more personal works. These comprised earlier classic Jewish ethical texts Masar literature, as well as a new literature for the movement. By focusing the student on self-understanding and introspection, often with profound psychological insight, the spiritual aims of Judaism could be internalized. After early opposition, the Lithuanian yeshiva world saw the need for this new component in their curriculum, and set aside times for individual Masar study and Masar talks. Masar shmuz. A spiritual mentor encouraged the personal development of each student. To some degree also, this Lithuanian movement arose in response, and as an alternative, to the separate mystical study of the Hasidic Judaism world. Hasidism began previously, in the 18th century, within traditional Jewish life in the Ukraine, and spread to Hungary, Poland and Russia. As the 19th century brought upheavals and threats to traditional Judaism, the Masar teachers saw the benefit of the new spiritual focus in Hasidism, and developed their alternative ethical approach to spirituality. Some variety developed within Lithuanian yeshivas to methods of studying Talmud and Masar, for example the contrast between breadth and depth or the place given to pilpul the type of casuistic argumentation popular from the 16th to 18th centuries. 
The new analytical approach of the Brisker method, developed by Rabbi Chaim Soloveitchik of Brisk, has become widely popular, though there are other approaches such as those of Mir, Chafetz Chaim, and Tells. In Masar, different schools developed, such as Slobodka and Novherdik, though today, a decline in devoted spiritual self-development from its earlier intensity has to some extent leveled out the differences. Hasidic yeshivas with the success of the yeshiva institution in Lithuanian Jewry, the Hasidic world developed their own yeshivas, in their areas of Eastern Europe. These comprised the traditional Jewish focus on Talmudic literature that is central to Rabbinic Judaism, augmented by study of Hasidic philosophy Hasidism. Examples of these Hasidic yeshivas are the Chabad Lubavitch Yeshiva system of Tomche Temimim, founded by Sholem Dubr Schneerson in Russia in 1897, and the Chokmai Lublin Yeshiva established in Poland in 1930 by Mayor Shapiro, who is renowned in both Hasidic and Lithuanian Jewish circles for initiating the Daf Yomi daily cycle of Talmud study. In many Hasidic yeshivas, study of Hasidic texts is a secondary activity, similar to the additional Masar curriculum in Lithuanian yeshivas. These paths see Hasidism as a means to the end of inspiring emotional devkit spiritual attachment to God and mystical enthusiasm. In this context, the personal pilgrimage of a Hasid to his Rebbe is a central feature of spiritual life, in order to awaken spiritual fervor. Often, such paths will reserve the Shabbat in the yeshiva for the sweeter teachings of the classic texts of Hasidism. In contrast, Chabad and Breslov, in their different ways, place daily study of their dynasties. Hasidic texts in central focus. Illustrative of this is Sholem Dubr Schneerson's wish in establishing the Chabad Yeshiva system, that the students should spend a part of the daily curriculum learning Chabad Hasidic texts, with Pilpul. Pilpul is the in-depth analytical investigation of a topic, traditionally reserved for the profound nuances of Talmudic study. The idea to learn Hasidic mystical texts with similar logical profundity, derives from the unique approach in the works of the Rebbes of Chabad, initiated by its founder Shnor Zalman of Liadi, to systematically investigate and articulate the Torah of the Baal Shem Tov in intellectual forms. Further illustrative of this is the differentiation in Chabad thought such as the Tract on Ecstasy by Dubber Shnori between general Hasidism's emphasis on emotional enthusiasm and the Chabad ideal of intellectually reserved ecstasy. In the Breslov movement, in contrast, the daily study of works from the imaginative, creative radicalism of Rabbi Nachman of Breslov awakens the necessary soulfulness with which to approach other Jewish study and observance. Sephardi yeshivas Although the yeshiva as an institution is in some ways a continuation of the Talmudic academies in Babylonia, large-scale educational institutions of this kind were not characteristic of the North African and Middle Eastern Sephardi Jewish world in pre-modern times. Education typically took place in a more informal setting in the synagogue or in the entourage of a famous rabbi. In medieval Spain, and immediately following the expulsion in 1492, there were some schools which combined Jewish studies with sciences such as logic and astronomy, similar to the contemporary Islamic madrasas. In 19th century Jerusalem, a college was typically an endowment for supporting ten adult scholars rather than an educational institution in the modern sense. Towards the end of the century, a school for orphans was founded providing for some rabbinic studies. Early educational institutions on the European model were Midrash Bet Zilka founded in 1870s Iraq and Porat Yosef Yeshiva founded in Jerusalem in 1914. Also notable is the Bet El Yeshiva founded in 1737 in Jerusalem for advanced Kabbalistic studies. Later Sephardic Yeshiva are usually on the model either of Porat Yosef or of the Ashkenazi institutions. The Sephardic world has traditionally placed the study of esoteric Jewish mysticism Kabbalah in a more mainstream position than in the European Ashkenazi world. This difference of emphasis arose in reaction to the historical events of the Sabbatean heresy in the 17th century, that suppressed widespread study of Kabbalah in Europe in favor of the strength of rabbinic Talmudic study. In Eastern European Lithuanian life, Kabbalah was reserved for an intellectual elite, while the mystical revival of Hasidism articulated Kabbalistic theology through Hasidic thought. These factors did not affect the Sephardi Jewish world, which retained a wider connection to Kabbalah in its traditionally observant communities. 
With the establishment of Sephardi yeshivas in Israel, after the immigration of the Arabic Jewish communities there, some Sephardi yeshivas incorporated study of more accessible Kabbalistic texts into their curriculum. Nonetheless, the European prescriptions to reserve advanced Kabbalistic study to mature and elite students also influence the choice of texts in such yeshivas. Topic: <laughs> Conservative movement yeshivas. Topic: In 1854, the Jewish Theological Seminary of Breslau was founded. It was headed by Zacharias Frankel and was viewed as the first educational institution associated with positive historical Judaism, the predecessor of conservative Judaism. In subsequent years, conservative Judaism established a number of other institutions of higher learning such as the Jewish Theological Seminary of America in New York City that emulate the style of traditional yeshivas in significant ways. However, many do not officially refer to themselves as yeshivas. One exception is the conservative yeshiva in Jerusalem, and all are open to both women and men, who study in the same classrooms and follow the same curriculum. Students may study part-time, as in a kollel, or full-time, and they may study lishma for the sake of studying itself or towards earning rabbinic ordination. Non-denominational or mixed yeshivas Nondenominational yeshivas and kollels with connections to conservative Judaism include Yeshivat Hadar in New York, the leaders of whom include rabbinical assembly members Eli Kaunfer and Shai Held. The Rabbinical School of the Academy for Jewish Religion in California is led by conservative Rabbi Mel Gottlieb. The faculty of the Academy for Jewish Religion in New York and of the Rabbinical School of Hebrew College in Newton Center, Massachusetts also includes a large number of conservative rabbis. Topic. Reform and Reconstructionist seminaries Topic. Hebrew Union College HUC, affiliated with Reform Judaism, was founded in 1875 under the leadership of Rabbi Isaac Mayer Wise in Cincinnati, Ohio. HUC later opened additional locations in New York, Los Angeles, and Jerusalem. It is a rabbinical seminary or college mostly geared for the training of rabbis and clergy specifically. Similarly, the Reconstructionist Rabbinical College of Reconstructionist Judaism, founded in Pennsylvania in 1968, functions to train its future clergy. Some Reform and Reconstructionist teachers also teach at nondenominational seminaries like the Academy for Jewish Religion in New York, the Academy for Jewish Religion in California, and the Rabbinical School of Hebrew College. In Europe, Reform Judaism trains rabbis at Leo Back College in London, UK and Abraham Geiger College in Potsdam, Germany. None of these institutions describes itself as a yeshiva. Topic. Contemporary Orthodox yeshivas Topic. Topic. Types of yeshiva Topic. Yeshiva Katana, Junior Yeshiva. Many Yeshivo Ketanot in Israel and some in the diaspora do not have a secular course of studies and all students learn Judaic Torah studies full time. Yeshiva High School, also called Masivta or Mechina or Yeshiva Katana, combines the intensive Jewish religious education with a secular high school education. The dual curriculum was pioneered by the Manhattan Talmudical Academy of Yeshiva University now known as Marsha Stern Talmudical Academy in 1916. Mechina, for Israeli high school graduates who wish to study for one year before entering the army, note in Telsh Yeshivas and in NER Yisrael of Baltimore they call their Masivtas, Yeshiva Katanas, Mechinas. Beth Midrash, for high school graduates, and is attended from one year to many years, dependent on the career plans and affiliation of the student. Yeshivat Hezder, yeshiva that has an arrangement with the Israel Defense Forces by which the students enlist together in the same unit and, as much as is possible serve in the same unit in the army. Over a period of about five years there will be a period of service starting in the second year of about 16 months. There are different variations. The rest of the time will be spent in compulsory study in the yeshiva. Kolel, yeshiva for married men. 
The Kolel idea, though having its intellectual roots traced to the Torah, is a relatively modern innovation of 19th century Europe, although the Mishnah tractate Megillah mentions the law that a town can only be called a city if it supports ten men to make up the required quorum for communal learning. Often, a kolel will be in the same location as the yeshiva. Baal Teshuvah Yeshivo catering to the needs of the newly orthodox, traditionally, religious girls. Schools are not called yeshiva. The BAI's Yaakov system was started in 1918 under the guidance of Sarah Shenayer. This system provided girls with a Torah education, using a curriculum that skewed more toward practical halakha and the study of Tanakh, rather than Talmud. BAI's Yaakovs are strictly Haredi schools. Non Haredi girls. Schools curricula often includes the study of Mishnah and sometimes Talmud. They are also sometimes called yeshiva, e.g., Prospect Park Yeshiva. Post high schools for women are generally called seminary or midrasha. Topic: Curriculum. Topic. Learning at an Orthodox yeshiva includes Torah study, the study of rabbinic literature, especially the Talmud rabbinic Judaism's central work, and the study of responsa for Jewish observance, and alternatively ethical musar or mystical Hasidic philosophy texts. In some institutions, classical Jewish philosophy texts or Kabbalah are studied, or the works of individual thinkers such as Abraham Isaac Cook. Non-Orthodox institutions offer a synthesis of traditional and critical methods, allowing Jewish texts and tradition to encounter social change and modern scholarship. The curriculum focuses on classical Jewish subjects, including Talmud, Tanakh, Midrash, Halacha, and philosophy, with an openness to modern scholarship. Shavruta-style learning Yeshiva students prepare for and review the shiur with their shavruta during a study session known as a seder. In contrast to conventional classroom learning, in which a teacher lectures to the student and the student repeats the information back in tests, shavruta-style learning challenges the student to analyze and explain the material, point out the errors in his partner's reasoning, and question and sharpen each other's ideas, often arriving at entirely new insights of the meaning of the text. A shavruta helps a student keep his mind focused on the learning, sharpen his reasoning powers, develop his thoughts into words, organize his thoughts into logical arguments, and understand another person's viewpoint. Shavruta style learning tends to be loud and animated, as the study partners read the Talmudic text and the commentaries aloud to each other, and then analyze, question, debate, and even argue their points of view to arrive at an understanding of the text. In the heat of discussion, they may even wave their hands, pound the table, or shout at each other. Depending on the size of the yeshiva, dozens or even hundreds of pairs of shavrutas can be heard discussing and debating each other's viewpoints. One of the skills of shavruta-style learning is the ability to block out all other discussions in the study hall and focus on one's shavruta alone. Academic <inaudible> year <inaudible> <inaudible> In most yeshivo, the year is divided into three periods terms called smanim. Elul Zeman starts from the beginning of the Hebrew month of Elul and extends until the end of Yom Kippur. This is the shortest approximately, six weeks, but most intense semester as it comes before the high holidays of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Winter Zeman starts after Sukkot and lasts until about two weeks before Passover, a duration of five months six in a Jewish leap year. Summer semester starts after Passover and lasts until Rosh Hodesh Avenue or Tisha B'Av, a duration of about three months. Typical schedule Talmud study in the typical Orthodox yeshiva, the main emphasis is on Talmud study and analysis. Generally, two parallel Talmud streams are covered during a Z-man trimester. The first is study in depth IYYUN, often confined to selected legally focused tractates, with an emphasis on analytical skills and close reference to the classical commentators. The second seeks to cover ground more speedily, to build general knowledge of the Talmud. 
In the yeshiva system of Talmudic study the first area to be mastered are eight mezikhtos volumes that deal with a given subject which are divided into chapters that deal with subtopics relating to the general subject that deal with civil jurisprudence. These are the mezikhtos that are studied in undergraduate yeshivo. These eight volumes are mastered first because it is with these subjects that a student can best master the technique of proper analysis of the Talmud. Only after this technique is mastered is a student ready to go on to other areas of the Talmud and develop a scholarship in all areas of the Talmud. Works generally studied to clarify the Talmudic text are the commentary by Rashi and the analyses of the Tosafists and other Rishonim commentators from the 11th to 14th centuries. There are two schools of Rishonim, one from France and the other from Spain who will sometimes hold different interpretations and understandings of the Talmud. Various other Mepharshim commentators, from later generations are also used. <inaudible> <inaudible> Jewish law <inaudible> Generally, a period is devoted to the study of practical halacha Jewish law. The text most commonly studied in Ashkenazic yeshivo is the Mishnah Buryura written by Rabbi Yisrael Meir Kagan, the Chafetz Chaim. The Mishnah Buryura is a compilation of Halashik opinions rendered after the time of the writing of the Shulchan Aruch. In Sephardic yeshivo, the Shulan Aruch itself is more commonly studied. The Bet Yosef is also more widely studied in Sephardic yeshivo. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Ethics, Mysticism, and Philosophy. Topic. The preeminent Masar ethical text studied in Yeshivo is the Masilat Yesharim path of the just, by Rabbi Moshe Chaim Lozato. Other works of Masar literature studied include Orkut Zadikim, paths of the righteous. Its authorship and time of writing is uncertain, but as it quotes Maimonides, it was written some time after his works were disseminated. Chovit Ha Levavo by Baya Ibn Pakuda. Malat Ha Mido. Benefit of good character traits. Mishnat R. Aharon Masar lectures on many topics by Rabbi Aharon Kotler. Miktivmi Eliyahu, the works of Rabbi Eliyahu Eliezer Dessler, Hasidic Yeshivo study the mystical, spiritual works of Hasidic philosophy. Chassidus. This draws on the earlier esoteric theology of Kabbalah, but articulates it in terms of inner psychological awareness and personal analogies. This makes Jewish mysticism accessible and tangible, so that it inspires emotional divikus, cleaving to God, and spiritual contribution to daily Jewish life. This serves some similar purposes to Masar, but through different means and with different contributions to intellectual and emotional life. Chabad Yeshivo, for example, study the Tanya, the Lakute Torah, and the voluminous works of the Rebbes of Chabad for an hour and a half each morning, before prayers, and an hour and a half in the evening. Many yeshivo in Israel belonging to the religious Zionism study the writings of Rav Kook, who articulated a unique personal blend of mysticism, creative exegesis and philosophy. <laughs> Torah and Bible study Intensive study of the Torah Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy with the commentary of Rashi Rabbi Shlomo Yitzhaki 1042-1105 is stressed and taught in all elementary grades, often with Yiddish translations and more notes in Haredi yeshivas. The teaching of Tanakh, Hebrew Bible, is usually only done on the high school level, and students read the weekly Torah portion by themselves known as the obligation of Shneim Mikravea Chad Targum. Hebrew Bible twice and Aramaic Targum once. Exceptions are the five Megillath and Tehillim. Since their inception, modern Orthodox yeshivo in Israel, offer courses in many, if not most, of the books of Nevi'im and Ketuvim. <laughs> College credit some yeshivas permit students to attend college on a limited basis, although often not encouraged and this is facilitated by arrangements for the above study to receive credit towards a degree. Languages <inaudible> 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 In most Lithuanian and Hasidic yeshivo throughout the world, classes are taught in Yiddish. Modern Orthodox, Zionist, or Baal Teshuvah yeshivo may use Israeli Hebrew or the local language. 
Students learn with each other in whatever language they are most proficient in, with Hasidic students usually learning in Yiddish, Israeli Lithuanian students in Hebrew, and American Lithuanian students in English. Yeshivish Yeshivish, also, from speak, is a term used somewhat jokingly for the Yiddish and Hebrew influenced English used in Orthodox yeshivas in America. See also BAI's Yaakov, Jewish Day School Masivta Religious School Topic References Topic <references>